Clouds and Cranes, Aaron here, back with another video. It's been two years since Hoyoverse Yossified Cloud Retainer, and it took them that long to finally make her playable. But what does she do? Who does she pair well with? How do we build her? And how good is she? Before I answer these questions, I just have to say that if you do end up enjoying my video, why not take a bite out of that white sugar sponge cake flavored subscribe button down below. But with that quick intro done, let's hop right into the video, starting off with the overview. Cloud Retainer, also known as Xian Yun, is an all-purpose defensive animo support with a focus on supporting her team through plunged attacks. Xian Yun's elemental skill has her leap in a direction dealing damage around her when she does. This ability can then be used up to two more times for additional leaps, and these two new leaps can be used in mid-air. A unique plunged attack that deals plunged attack damage can be made at any point after using a leap. However, this plunged attack levels up the more leaps that are made before casting. Level 1 deals the least damage and has an AoE slightly smaller than Kazuha's press skill. Level 2 deals slightly more damage and has the exact same AoE as Kazuha's press skill. And her level 3 plunge deals almost double the damage of her level 2 plunge and has an AoE slightly larger than Kazuha's press skill's AoE. Each leap and plunge also takes about 0.5 seconds to get off, meaning that if you want to have the benefits of her level 2 or level 3 skill, she will have a longer on-field time than most other off-field units. Regardless of level, her skill always generates 5 particles and it has a massive 12 second cooldown. Xian Yun's elemental burst has her deal burst damage in an AoE, burst heal her entire team, and it grants her team 8 stacks. These stacks don't matter much now, but they will when we get to her Ascension 4 passive. After the initial cast, she summons a little mechanical birdie for 16 seconds that signifies her burst is active. While her burst is active, she will grant her allies increased jump height, and she will heal her entire team every 2.5 seconds. When any character deals damage from a plunge attack that hits the ground, not to be confused with the damage of a plunge attack that can hit enemies during the plunge animation, her burst will lose one of her 8 sacks, and she will unleash a coordinated attack. As a final note, the initial cast of her burst has no ICD, while its coordinated attacks have the normal 2.5 seconds or 3 hits ICD. Up next, we have her first suspension passive, which grants her entire team a small plunge attack crit rate buff for 20 seconds based on how many enemies she hits with her elemental skills plunged attack. This buff can stack up to 10% as 4 enemies hit. This buff is a relatively minor damage increase for all plunged attack damage dealers. This is due to the fact that she needs to hit many enemies with her skills plunged attack to reach the 10% buff. In most situations, this buff will usually be only around about half the cap, which makes this passive rather underwhelming. Finally, we have Xian Yun's 4th Ascension passive, which grants purpose to the 8 sacks her burst grants the team. Every time a unit hits an enemy with the ground Round AoE created by plunge attacks while her burst is active, the plunge attacks damage done to one of the enemies hit by the plunge will be increased by a flat amount based on 180% of Xian Yun's attack. This flat damage bonus caps at 9,000 damage, which would equate to about 5,000 attack. This cap is so ridiculously high that it's nearly impossible to reach without purely focusing on building into it using the entire team. Instead, the flat damage you'll get will normally be between 4,080 and 5,300 depending on the weapon. Despite this buff being super odd, it is still a buff to units that do want to weave plunged attacks into their rotation. As a defensive support, Xian Yun's main use is her healing, buffing, and swirling capabilities. So for her talent priority, we will want to focus mainly on the talents that affect these factors. Since only her healing is impacted by her talent levels, we want to focus on that first. So her elemental burst is first to level up. After that, you can ignore the other two since they offer rather negligible damage increase. Pieces. However, if you do want to lean into her damage a bit, then leveling her skill second while still ignoring her normal attacks will normally be best. Next up, we have her combos. Xian Yun has a relatively long duration on her burst, as it lasts 16 seconds. This duration surpasses most other characters' durations except the super long ones like the Archons or Xing Shou, so she will usually be the first or second character used in a party. However, if using the Viridescent Defender Rear set, she should be used later in the rotation to maximize the uptime of the passive effect. When she's on field, it is best to use her skill once, then plunge for the shorter on field duration. After that, you'll want to use her burst and then swap. Now that her base kit is through with, let's see what her constellations have to offer. Xian Yun's first constellation grants her skill an extra cast. This is really good for reducing her energy needs, so her energy requirements will end up getting lowered by 50% if using an energy generating weapon like Favonius Codex or her signature weapon, or up to 90% if not using an energy generating weapon. However, 
This extra skill cast costs her an extra two seconds of on-field time, meaning she will now be on-field for about the same amount of time that the Raiden Shogun would. This is bad for consistently keeping buffs up on the right units and will usually lead to a DPS loss. So instead of using her skills one after another, it would be better to instead use one at the start or end of the rotation and then once again when you actually want to use her burst. Will it extend the rotation by two seconds still? Yes, it would, but it won't interfere with the rotation like it would if using her skill back to back. Xian Yun C2 grants her 20% attack after using her element skill. Additionally, the scalings on her Ascension 4 passive talent are doubled. This is a large flat damage increase and shows to be incredibly powerful as this bonus leads to around a 20% damage increase for the on-field character on average. This is an incredibly strong damage increase for most characters that want to utilize plunged attacks. It's so strong that this constellation will prove to be these characters' best constellation. And on top of that, it apparently makes her glow, which is a nice plus. Xiangyun's third constellation is next, and it simply increases her burst's level by three. However, this does not lead to any meaningful increase to her numbers, as it only increases her damage by about 2 to 6.5% depending on the comp, and increases her healing by about 88%. Her low personal damage gets a minuscule damage increase, while her massive healing numbers completely surpass the minimum healing requirement as they're shot into the stratosphere and out of sight. It simply offers not enough of what is needed, and instead offers too much of what was already good. Her C4 took notes from her third constellation on how to disappoint me, as it allows N to burst heal her entire team with her elemental skill once every 5 seconds. It might increase her healing even further, but if you were struggling with Xianyun's healing numbers, then you're most likely doing something wrong. This is purely an overworld convenience constellation and nothing more. Her fifth constellation increases Xianyun's skill level by 3. This leads to about an 11% damage increase for her personal damage output. That might sound good on paper, but this really equates to about half of what a single Hyper Bloom would deal, making it a pretty bad constellation. Xianyun's C6 starts off by increasing her skills plunged attacks crit damage by 15, 35, or 70% depending on what level it is. Additionally, when the special plunge attack is used while her burst is active, it will not go on cooldown until it is used 8 times. This constellation turns her into a full-blown plunged attack DPS unit. While that might sound insane, it's not really all that good since her personal scalings are rather low and because this constellation doesn't buff her that much. The only time that she reaches the same damage output as the strongest DPS units in the game is when she's paired with Bennett, Fiorina, and Verusan, and when she has her weapon at Refinement 5. This E6 also makes it so that her skill cannot generate particles in her burst, which is pretty poo, and it can also mess up the energy rotation enabled by her first constellation. However, it is good to note that it does enable a pure support unit to act as a DPS, which I think is probably the largest benefit of this change. All around though, I would say Xian Yun's constellations are all pretty terrible other than her first and second ones. Bioverse does not seem like they're able to make good constellations for support units, despite it not being super difficult, buffing her up with more or better utility like they did with her C2, or unbinding some of her shackles like they did with C1 is better than giving her more healing she never needed, or more damage when she's still lacking in the end. On the brighter side of things, at least you don't have to feel like you're missing out on much with the C0 Xian Yun. Now with her constellations done, let's move on to Xian Yun's artifact options. Starting off, we have the obvious Viridescent and Divinarir set. This artifact set is so strong that it is used by almost every single animal character in the game due to the insane 40% resistance shred it offers. This effect is beyond phenomenal, and it will prove to be her best in slot set when she's paired with Pyro, Electro, Hydro, and Cryo units. However, if she is used to support units of the Dendro, Geo, and Animo elements, her best all-around set here will be the Song of Days Past set. Due to the large flat damage bonus it offers, this will usually be her best set and forget it artifact set, as it works well in every single situation and because she will always be able to reach the max bonus of it due to her constant team wide healing output. The issue is, it's incredibly resin inefficient to farm for, so the next best set she could use would be the Noblesse Oblige artifact set. This set will not only buff her team, but it will also buff her own buff, her healing, and it will buff her burst's damage output. It is a fantastic support option for her, and if you don't have the other two for the situations they're best in, this set will be your best pick. In terms of stat priority, it's best to aim for HP, attack, energy recharge, attack percent, and then attack percent on the circlet. This is mainly to help Xian Yun reach her base requirements. However, if these requirements are met, her sands can be swapped out for an attack percent one, and her circlet can be swapped out for a healing bonus or even crit circlet, depending on what you're looking for. But what requirements does she have? Well, first 
increases her energy recharge, which can go up to 230%, especially since some teams have a hard time generating energy for her. This will fluctuate slightly based on team comp, but it will mostly be impacted by energy generating weapons like Favonius Codex and her signature. The former can reduce her energy requirement to 170%, while the latter can reduce it further up to 155%, depending on how many plunge attacks are used. After that, you're looking for a minimum of 2,000 attack. She wants a lot of attack for her personal damage, buffing potential, and healing output, so reaching this bare minimum is just as important as reaching her energy requirement. After that, it's whatever else you need, but crit will usually be the priority here for most players. For Xian Yun's weapon options, I'm going to do something slightly different. Instead of comparing her damage numbers with each other based on the weapon option, I'm going to pair her damage output with the damage numbers of the current best plunge attack character in the game, Zhao. I'm using Zhao here instead of others because of his reliance on energy and because of his ability to heavily utilize the flat damage buff she offers. So with that in mind, let's see what weapons deal the largest total damage output for her and Zhao. First off, we have her signature weapon, the Crane's Echoing Call. This weapon offers the highest base attack in the game and an attack percent substat, exactly like Shen He's Calamity Queller. However, unlike Shen He's and most other supports garbage signature weapons, this one has a beneficial passive effect that increases the plunge attack damage of the entire team by 28%. Additionally, the wielder generates 2.5 energy per plunge attack used by a different teammate. This passive pretty much makes it only wieldable on Xian Yun as no one else can utilize what it offers effectively. However, it does heavily reduce her energy requirement by up to 80%, which is insane. When paired with her first constellation, she can afford to run almost no energy recharge and still get her burst back relatively consistently. It also buffs her plunge attack flat damage bonus due to the massive attack it offers, and it buffs plunge attack damage even more with the percent damage bonus it offers. It's so strong on her that it will become her best in slot weapon option in all teams that would benefit from plunged attacks. But if she's used in a team without this specific requirement, Xiang Yun's best weapon would be the Favonius Codex since it heavily reduces her and her team's energy requirements. If this will usually end up being better for the team than the weapon that offers more buffs or focusing on her attack stat to maximize her ascension 4 flat damage buff. The energy reduction for the team lets everyone build into much more needed stats too, which can allow this weapon to surpass her signature even in plunged attack focused comps. Up next, we have her best all-around damaging weapon option, the Skyward Atlas. This weapon offers a crap ton of attack, skill with an all-around strong elemental damage bonus, and a passive effect that grants her another form of damage. It's so good on her that it even surpasses her signature weapon when she's used as a beam DPS at C6. This weapon is fantastic for her and becomes her best all around option in every single situation you can think of. Next up, we have the massive attack stat stick, the Memory of Dust. This thing offers just a crap ton of attack, even without the shield, and it will also end up being one of her best healing and buffing options available. However, it has a short duration on its passive effect, and its passive requires building a lot of stacks, which would increase her on field time. It is a relatively good weapon if you can stack it, but even then, it's still worse than the three before. In fifth place, we have, surprisingly enough, the Wine and Song. This might be a massive shocker to a lot of you because this weapon usually sucks. However, it does offer a massive amount of attack and energy recharge, which is all Xian Yun really wants. The issue with this weapon is the passive effects attack buff, since it only lasts for five seconds. This is an awfully short duration to have, as it can barely stay active even in quick swap compositions. This is the main issue with Wine and Song, as it basically basically becomes not even an option, which is used purely as a support. But in the comps where she can make use of this effect, it will be one of the better weapons available to her. After that, we have the Oath's One Eye for the same reasons as Wine and Song. This weapon is generally worse numbers-wise because it offers less raw stats. However, unlike the Wine and Song, its passive effects uptime is significantly longer, making it generally better than Wine and Song in terms of free-to-play options. Hash Flow Supervision is up next as it offers Xian Yun a massive basic attack stat, some attack percent, and some crit rate. Despite the fact that the normal and charge attack damage bonus plus the attack speed bonus is wasted on her, the raw stats it provides still makes it one of the best weapons she has available. Tola Tola's Remembrance is after cash flow for similar reasons, though it does offer less attack and offers crit damage instead of crit rate, which can make it hard to properly balance stats. Allied of Boundless Blue is in ninth place since it offers the same base stat as White and Song. However, this weapon does have a worse passive for her, which is why it's this far down. However, if you don't have any of the limited time weapons stated before, the Flowing Purity will be the best 
free-to-play weapon she has available. This book offers the same main and sub stats as the Oathsworn Eye, but with a passive that grants a lot of elemental damage bonus. While this stat might not be amazing for Xian Yun, it is still beneficial to her damage output. With all that said, I would say that I can only recommend using two different weapons, those of which being the Favonius Codex due to the massive energy it offers and the fact that it enables her to work in quick swap teams and the Skyward Atlas due to it granting her the largest amount of attack and damage she needs in every situation. These weapons are so good and so versatile that they tower over every other weapon she has available. However, if you don't have these two, the Oath Sworn Eye and the Flowing Purity are two free-to-play options that she can also use. But what about her signature weapon, the Crane's Echoing Call? This weapon is her best in all situations from C0 to C6. It provides a large plunge attack buff, a huge energy requirement reduction, and a massive amount of attack. It's everything she could hope for, right? The issue comes with Favonius Codex, as it's on par with her signature fan when she's used in her main support role. Even when she's used as a DPS, Skyward Atlas and Lost Prayer are only slightly behind in terms of damage output. These weapons are also pretty free to obtain and can be used on every other support or every other DPS character in the game. On the other hand, the Green's Echoing Call is tailor-made for Xian Yun's kit and no one else. Since it's so niche to the point that no one else can use it, and since it's barely better than her more free-to-play options, I have to ask, what's the point of going for it? It simply does not diff her free-to-obtain options hard enough until it's at Refinement 5, and even then, it's only going to be used on Xian Yun. As a pure anima support unit, Xian Yun can make use of and can be used by a good amount of units, but some units synergize with her much better than others. Characters that need healing and want to utilize plunge attacks are the best units that Xian Yun could pair with. With that in mind, let's start off the synergy section with our signature plunge attack damage dealers, Xiao and the unreleased Ga Meng. These being DPS units not only fit her base criteria, but they also have massive multipliers that pair well with the flat damage bonus she offers them, and she can use an artifact set to massively buff them both with ease. These two benefit so much from Xian Yun that she will be one of their best supports. The Arena is the next character that synergizes incredibly well with Xian Yun, and despite the fact that she herself does not deal plunge attack damage, she is debatably Xian Yun's best synergy. This is because of a variety of reasons. One, Fiorina has relatively slow team-wide health reduction, which requires Xian Yun's team-wide healing to counteract. Two, Fiorina offers insane damage percent bonuses and massive incoming healing bonuses, which benefits Xian Yun insanely well. Three, both of Xian Yun's best artifact sets can be used to buff Fiorina's damage output or can be paired with Fiorina's percent damage buff to massively boost the damage output of a main DPS. And four, Fiorina enables vaporize reactions to occur, which Xian Yun's flat damage bonus benefits greatly from. These two benefit so much from each other that they will prove to be one of the stronger cores in the game. Up next is our premier vaporized DPS unit, Hu Tao. Xian Yun is incredible with Hu Tao due to her ability to grant this little lady a massive flat damage bonus, resistance shred, constant healing, and the ability to turn jump canceling into more damage through plunged attacks. The last reason is also a huge game changer for her, since a C0 Hu Tao would normally have massive stamina problems if she tried to use dashes to cancel her charged attack. Because Hu Tao is pyro, her vaporizes from her plunged attacks will make the most use out of Xian Yun's flat damage. The damage increase Hu Tao gets from Xian Yun is so large that it makes Xian Yun Hu Tao's new best constellation, even over her legendary C1. The final character we have is Bennett. This character is freaking broken in general, but when paired with Xian Yun, he becomes even more overpowered. Bennett can be used to either support or be supported by Xian Yun. Since everything Xian Yun does scales with attack, Bennett's ability to increase her attack by about a thousand ends up increasing her numbers by about 44%. This goes both ways though, as Xian Yun enables Bennett to act as one of the best plunge attack vape main DPS units in the game. This is phenomenal for both of them, especially since they're both support units which grants their teams more freedom in choosing the characters they want to utilize. Even if you don't want them to support one another, they can be used together in order to massively buff any character you want. With synergies done, let's move on to Xian Yun's team composition. First team comp we have 
our Shao teams. Here, she'll act as a healer, grouper, a battery for the team, and as the flat damage buffing support for Xiao. While she won't be better than Perusan in the buffing role, she does enable more team versatility due to the fact that she does support Xiao in multiple different ways. While Jean can't perform in the same role as Xian Yun can, she competes with Xian Yun in the buffing department only when she has her 40% animal resistance shred at C4. However, Xian Yun has a longer duration on her burst, which is much better suited for Xiao's insanely long on-field window. Next up are vape teams that are led by a pyro character that deals damage with plunged attacks. Most vape DPS units would love to use plunged attacks anyway due to their lack of ICD plus their lack of stamina consumption. Hu Tao is the premier damage dealer in this comp due to her ability to easily utilize plunged attacks and due to her absurd damage output especially when paired with double hydro. However, other vape DPS pyro characters can also be used here like Jiluk, Ga Bing, Li, Yan Fei, or anyone else that can use a C6 Bennett's Pyro Infusion. Melt Punch teams take the same recipe but swap an ingredient. Just like Pyro with Hydro, Cryo can take advantage of Pyro to melt off of using their plunged attacks. These comps will be worse off due to the lack of good Cryo characters that can utilize these teams due to the lack of good off-field Pyro applicators and due to the lack of Arena. However, they can still do very well, especially if there's not a C6 Bennett to override an infusion. Up next, we have her role as a driver support unit. Here, she can work well in a variety of compositions like the National Comp and Taser teams with Hyper Bloom, Breeze, Virgin, yada yada yada, you get the point. Because she's Animo and a defensive support, she can fit in every comp just for the resistance shred and the constant healing she offers. This doesn't have to be for only when she's used as a driver. Since she is Animo and since she's a defensive support, she can work in the background for every composition in the game other than in Mono Geo teams. But her versatility is something I would rather talk about in her rating. So let's move on to that topic. First off is her damage output, which is rather horrendous. It's not super terrible, but her scalings are so low that it's usually better to build her with full EM for damage output. But if you do that, you lose out on everything else she offers, which is much more important. So when considering her damage output when she's built with attack, I think she deserves a 1.5 out of 5. Xian Yun can swirl about 7 times in a rotation. While this is a lot, the AoE for her swirls are quite small and limited in their application, especially when compared to the likes of Sucrose, Venti, Kasuha, or even Jean. So I think she earns a slightly below average 2 out of 5 for application. Xian Yun's offensive utility is phenomenal. Not only does she offer resistance shredding due to Viridescent Venerir and a flat damage bonus on plunged attack, but she also enables everyone to utilize plunged attacks. This is incredibly good because many characters would love to use plunged attacks for their damage output but never could. Now they can, which will increase certain characters' damage output by so much that she will end up becoming one of their best supports. So I think she deserves a 3.5 out of 5 for offensive utility. Xian Yun generates more particles than most, but at the cost of having a long elemental skill cooldown. While this won't matter for a good amount of comps, this does limit her battery potential somewhat in quick swap teams when compared to other units like Kasuha or Jean. However, I don't think this will matter too much for most people since Favonius Codex is her best weapon. So I'm going to give her a slightly above average 3 out of 5 here. In terms of defensive utility, Xian Yun is able to heal the entire team almost for an entire team rotation. While she will not protect a character from getting one shot, she will be able to keep her team topped off with ease. So I will give her an average 2.5 out of 5 for defensive utility. For flexibility and versatility, Xian Yun can do a lot. She buffs, she debuffs, she has mobility, she can be used on and off field, she can do everything. Her only limit is that she can't be used to support Geo teams. But if Ito, Navia, and Noel don't matter to you, and she will prove to be the most versatile and flexible character in the game alongside Shang Li. So I will give her a 5 out of 5 here. With all that said, I'm going to have to give Xian Yun an average 2.5 out of 5 as a character. Xian Yun is relatively okay. She could do a lot for any team that wants her, but there lies the problem. Who wants her? While she does enable some units to use a different playstyle, she does not offer enough to warrant getting her. This used to not be the case before her nerf, as the grouping she had, while it wasn't much, it still made her the only defensive animo support in the game with consistent grouping capabilities. This was what enabled her to work more as a generalist support unit, and it's what made her so good in Freeze teams. For instance, she fixed Freeze teams, but more specifically Ayaka's current problem of wanting Furina, Shinha, an animo grouper, and a defensive unit. But now, she's a much more niche gene. But those are just my thoughts on Shang Yun. What do you all think of her? Do you think she's even better than I do? Or do you think I might be a bit too positive on her? Tell me your thoughts in 
the comments below. But now it's time for me to say farewell. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Bye-bye.